Hello, welcome everyone to yet another episode of the Microsoft 365 Defender Ninja Show. Today, it's all about Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps. And before I'm introducing my expert of today, a reminder, if you missed an episode, go to aka.ms slash ninja show. You can also, of course, see all the upcoming episodes. Make sure you get them added to your calendar so you don't miss them. So today, super excited to have Caroline with me. Caroline, please introduce yourself. Awesome. Thank you, Heike. Hi, everyone. My name is Caroline Lee, and I'm the product marketing manager covering Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much. So I know we have a lot to cover, so I want to make this right away an announcement that this will be a two-part episode. <laughs> so we will start with um, this one, and then we will come back with all the rest that we actually want to cover, but we don't want to make episodes too long. So today, I think we are talking about uh, the Defender for Cloud Apps moving all into the Microsoft 365 Defender portal. And of course, a lot of news and these kind of things. Let's before, for everyone who might not know, Caroline, what is Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps? If you can give us an elevator pitch and why do customers need it, want it and should have it? Absolutely. So Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps has been historically known as our CASB or Cloud Access Security Broker. And pretty much this is our main protection mechanism to protect how users are interacting with applications. Today, customers have tons of SaaS apps in their environment. They're not sure what which applications users are accessing and whether they're risky, if they're compliant, if they're safe for use. So Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps has a suite of capabilities to make sure that we're putting the right protections in place for those applications. So it's... Um... One side, it shows customers basically what are secure apps and what might be risky apps, but it also gives them visibility into how users are interacting with those apps. Am I right there? Exactly. So pretty much if Caroline accesses Salesforce, if I'm downloading any content, if I'm copying and pasting content from that application to another one, we'll show all of that activity within Defender for Cloud Apps because of our API connectors, which, which track all of that activity uh, for specific applications. So let's give us an overview how it looks like. Or do we want to start? I, I remember we talked about the show and you had a slide that talks about a few components that we want to touch on. Or where do we start? I think I want to talk about kind of our shift from CASB to we're kind of moving into a new area and we're, we're really redefining the identity for Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps. So I'll talk about that for a little bit and then we'll go straight into a demo. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so let's first talk about traditional CASBs, again, cloud access security brokers. And there are a few fundamental pillars that come with a CASB. The first one is called discover and control the use of shadow IT. So pretty much discovering all the applications in a customer's environment, which ones users are accessing, and also which applications customers may not be aware of. So for example, maybe after working from home, Joe Smith is now watching Netflix on his corporate device. We'll go ahead and showcase that traffic, the transactions, the users who are accessing those applications. And we'll also showcase apps that may be more risky. So um, apps that aren't compliant, for example, don't have HIPAA um, included as part of their risk factors. So that's all about kind of getting a lay of your land um, about which SaaS apps are in your environment. And then we kind of have the two pillars on the left and right hand side, 
I'll first start off with the information protection side. So with traditional CASBs, you get data loss prevention uh, capabilities. So depending on the applications that you've connected, we'll see all of the files that live in those different applications, and you can apply policies to make sure that there's no data leakage, that we're labeling uh, certain sensitive files. So for example, if you're a bank and you have financial information living in those files, you can go ahead and label those just to add additional layer of protection. And then on the right hand side, this is all about threat protection. So traditional CASBs have a ton of built in anomaly detection policies, ours included, to detect things like impossible travel activity, risky sign ins, maybe suspicious OAuth app behavior. These are all built in detections you get out of the box with CASBs. But you know, now that CASBs have been on the market for a while, we're starting to see customer use cases evolve. They understand the use of shadow IT. They understand that they need to protect the files in their apps. And they also understand that, yes, we're getting these built-in detections, but they need more support. They need more capabilities for these SaaS applications. Which brings me to... The shift from CASB to SaaS security. So a couple of the, of the data points that I've already hit. The inventory of SaaS applications in a customer's environment is only increasing. So how do customers get a good handle of kind of that SaaS chaos going on in their environment? Second, customers um, have users who are accessing these applications off the corporate network. We live in a world today where hybrid work is so prominent. We have additional use cases that we need to help our customers satisfy to ensure that we're protecting users who opt to bring their own devices. And then, of course, SaaS applications are now becoming customer assets. The SaaS applications are holding the most risky, sensitive data, and we need to make sure that we have the right protection mechanisms in place to protect those assets. So this all sounds, of course, amazing um, and definitely needed. But my first thought was like, what's needed? Like, what is the software and how do you get it actually running? Like, do you what, what do you need from a deployment perspective, mm -hmm. if that yeah. makes sense? If you could maybe spend a couple of sentences on that, that would be awesome. Absolutely. And that's a great question. So it's actually very easy to get um, completely plugged into Defender for Cloud Apps. And it's just by setting up your app, uh, apps to connect to our API connectors. So today we have 25 API connectors that customers can use. And once you've set up that connection, your activities, everything will start flowing in seamlessly. The second deployment method is actually for specifically for our shadow IT discovery pillar. And if customers are using Defender for Endpoint today, it is such a seamless integration. It's literally one toggle in the Microsoft 365 Defender portal. And once you've toggled that button, Again, all of that traffic will start coming in. You'll start to see all of that applications, the risk scores, the um, transactions, the users, all of that rich data will start flowing in automatically with Defender for Endpoint and Defender for Cloud Apps integration. And then the, the other two ways is we do have partnerships with certain secure web gateways, such as Zscaler, iBoss, Karada, and you can leverage those integrations to start seeing that traffic as well. But in the case that you don't have any of those specific proxies, you can also set up your own through a log collector. And we support a number of different proxies to make that connection super easy today. Okay, so thanks. That answers it. And if someone has questions, so now is the time to use the Q&A and ask your questions, and we will make sure that these are being answered in the background. So, um, Caroline, um, you showed me that new picture, and um, we talk about discovery, information protection, threat protection. We will have a demo, but I think first, what is SaaS security? 
I love this question. So we've, again, just going back to the point that I mentioned earlier about how we're really trying to redefine the identity of Defender for Cloud Apps at Microsoft to SaaS security. Because of the different capabilities that we have today and, and the new investment areas that we have, we're really trying to um, position ourselves as more of a comprehensive SaaS security solution. And here's why. So after you've kind of discovered all of the different SaaS applications and gotten a good lay of your land through our discovery feature, the next one is SaaS security posture management, also known as SSPM today on the market. This capability actually feeds directly within Microsoft Secure Score, straight within Microsoft 365 Defender, and it surfaces all of the misconfigurations within your applications. So for example, maybe a customer hasn't configured MFA for Salesforce. We'll surface that and we'll provide the remediation action so they can take action directly within that application. After SSPM is information protection. We kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but again, once you've connected your applications to Defender for Cloud Apps, you can start seeing all of the files, your complete data exposure, and then of course, create policies to protect the data inside those apps. And then continuous threat protection. So in addition to the built-in anomaly detection policies that we have today, by living within Microsoft 365 Defender, we get things like advanced hunting capabilities, the ability to build your own custom detections, um, the comfort of being able to see all of your different security workloads on a single pane of glass. This really takes our continuous threat protection capabilities to the next level. The last pillar here is app to app protection. You may have heard of our add on called app governance, and this is a unique capability that lives within Defender for Cloud Apps that allows us to actually see OAuth applications and the API activity associated with those applications. And you can kind of think of all of the different capabilities that we offer today for SaaS apps, we offer those same cap capabilities for OAuth apps as well through app governance, which really adds in another layer of protection and visibility to another breadth of applications. So um, discovery, information protection, and threat protection is part of Defender for Cloud Apps and app governance is an add-on? Exactly. Yep. App governance is an add-on. And then um, the SSPM capabilities, it's not an add-on. It comes directly within Defender for Cloud Apps, but we are seeing seeing this as a new pillar um, within our world of SaaS security. Okay, perfect. So um, I think we wanted to have a look at the portal, but then, um, yeah, let's actually have a look at the portal and then talk a little bit about Ignite announcements because they were just like happening a couple of weeks ago, but I want to see something colorful here. You got it, Heika. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, so here we are in the Microsoft 365 Defender portal. Again, Heiko, like you mentioned, during Ignite, we announced that Defender for Cloud Apps is now available in Microsoft 365 Defender in public preview. And if you'd like, you can actually take a guided tour here for Cloud Apps and just, just to make sure you're comfortable and that you can see where everything migrated to. It's a pretty easy user experience, but just know the tour is there in case you need it. And then on the left hand side, you'll see Cloud Apps is available here with all of the different capabilities as well. And we're going to go straight into Cloud Discovery. So this is basically where you see all the cloud applications that have been discovered already. Exactly. And this specific view is actually showing the applications that were discovered through the Microsoft Defender for Endpoint integration. You can have as many connect continuous reports as you'd like. If you have maybe a blue coat proxy that you need traffic from, you could connect that to Cloud Discovery as well as Microsoft Defender for endpoint traffic, and you can pivot between the different reports. 
All right, so here we have the cloud discovery dashboard. This is gonna give you some insights into the number of applications that were discovered, the IPs, the users, the devices. We break it down into different categories. You can filter each category. You can see the top entities in your environment. We really give you a, a ton of different insights here just so you can get an understanding of kind of what's going on um, with your SaaS applications. Let's take a look at our discovered apps. Perfect. So here we'll see a list of all of the applications that was discovered through Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. And it shows you um, not just the apps, but all the insights, right? So it shows you um, uploads and how often it's being used and all these mm -hmm. rich insights right here in Cloud Discovery. Exactly. And in addition to those insights, we can actually see um, a score here. And this score is um, it's on a scale from zero to 10. 10 being the most safe, poses the least amount of risk to your users, whereas zero posing the highest amount of risk. And if we open the application, you can see exactly how that score was calculated. And we break it down into four categories. And we have general, security, compliance, and legal. And if we hover over one of these risk factors, you'll see an I here, you'll actually see that 3%, which contributed to the overall score. So the weights associated with each risk factor. And in addition to those other insights, we get other details such as where the headquarters is, the data center, the login URL. We really try to provide our customers a ton of information so that they get a good understanding of each application. So all of these that we saw right now, they all looked pretty legit, pretty good. So mm -hmm. I want to see a risky one. I want to see oh. what shouldn't be there or what should be um, taken care of. I love it. So let's maybe take a look at some applications that have a score of five or lower. This is what we usually like to tell our customers when they're trying to understand kind of what's going on in their environment. And we see we have one application here, Yahoo, that has a risk score of three. And actually this application has already been sanctioned. And what sanctioned means is that this customer SOC team has already gone in and reviewed this application and done their due diligence to say, okay, this is a safe application. Even though it has a low risk score, we've done our investigation to ensure that it doesn't pose a threat for our environment and our users. But in the case that customers maybe don't want users accessing risky applications, they can actually unsanction this application. And what unsanctioning means is blocking users from accessing this application. And if they're leveraging the Defender for Endpoint integration, once it's been unsanctioned, it'll block it directly on the endpoint. No additional configuration needed. And you know, if a customer had a number of risky applications, let's say that maybe they had 50 to 100 applications that have very um, low scores, they can block those applications automatically through a policy. And if we want, we can walk through one together really quickly. <laughs> oh, yeah, please do that. Show me how a policy can be configured. Perfect. So let's say that we want to block apps with a score of five or lower, and we will, we've already have that criteria here because we took it directly from the search criteria, but you can add additional filters. So maybe um, HIPAA compliance is very important to you, and we want to make sure apps have that risk factor. So let's add that. And then customers could also configure this however they'd like. Right now, this policy will match on any applications that have a score of five or lower and that do not meet HIPAA compliance. And what we can do is we can tag the app as unsanctioned, which would block the users from accessing that app. 
or you could even create your own custom tag. So if you didn't want to block the applications right off the bat, but maybe review them, you could tag them with an in review or review later. So that way your SOC team knows exactly which applications that need to go into their queue to do an additional amount of investigation. I have a question here, Caroline. So if we have a Defender for Endpoint integration, I understand this goes automatically, right? So you set your policy and then it gives it down to the client. So what if I have a proxy or how does this information get somewhere else if I don't have the integration with Defender for Endpoint? I remember originally you had to, I don't know, create a group policy and configure these, these settings. How does this work automatically here if you say um, set that policy? I love this question. So if we actually go back to the cloud discovery dashboard, I know, Heike, you and I were chatting earlier about the different deployment methods. So if a customer has opted to uh, deploy a log collector and um, to collect traffic from that blue coat proxy, what they would have to do is they could generate a block script. And this will... Um, This is a script, you select whichever proxy that you use, you generate it, and then you deploy it straight on your uh, blue coat proxy. And then that's how it would block the applications that have been marked unsanctioned. If you've opted to maybe use the Zscaler integration, um, the Zscaler integration is pretty slick because it will actually sync Uh, the traffic between Defender for Cloud Apps every two hours, and it'll get the list of applications that have been marked as unsanctioned and automatically um, block those applications directly within Zscaler. So it's pretty easy. Yeah. So you talked a lot about connectors. What are these connectors? Yes. Where do I find the connectors? How do I set these up? <laughs> Great question. So if we go down to the settings here, you'll see that we have a cloud apps settings. And this is very similar to what we saw in the standalone portal. Nothing will be new here to our users. Um, so there's no surprises. If we go down to app connectors, you'll see a list of all of your connected applications. And then of course, Here are our, all of our app connectors, and the setup is pretty much the same. Um, we can take Box, for example, and the interface may look a little bit different, but the actual configuration steps, all the same. So again, no surprises. So why do I use this connector now? So the connectors are critical because once you've actually done the API connection, this is how we get all of those activities, how we see all of the files is directly through the API, which is why it's so important for customers to connect the critical applications in their environment. Because if we can't see the traffic, if we can't see the files, then we can't put any protections on top of those. So the discovery works um, through HTTP, HTTPS discovery, I would assume, just making it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, no way. Um, once you see all the discovered apps and you want to get further details and insights, you actually need the connector to access the APIs and get those information. Is this correct? Exactly. So it's kind of a, a two-part process, if you will. You discover all of the applications in your environment. And then for the ones that we actually have API connectors for, just like you said, connect those apps because you'll get an even deeper amount of insights for those specific applications using our API connectors. We discovered apps and we had a score for apps if they are risky or not risky. Is there a place, rather than going through all the different apps, where I can see what I should do from make, getting a good you know, posture management for my SaaS applications? Yes, I love this question because this is exactly why we invested in SaaS security posture management. So if we actually go back up here into secure score, 
And when you think about secure score, everyone thinks about posture as kind of the number one reason why we have it, right? So that's exactly why we chose to integrate directly with secure score. And if we go to the recommended actions and if we filter, you'll see two applications down here, Salesforce and ServiceNow. So these applications are currently in public preview as far as the SaaS security posture management capabilities, which is why it says preview there. And you'll see all of the different actions that we're recommending to an admin to better um, improve the posture for those applications. And it could be as simple as password complexity. And if we open up one of these, you'll see exactly the impact, what it protects against. You could add a status or an action plan. So maybe you want to address um, 10 uh, actions at the same time. So that way everybody has visibility into your exact plan of action and which actions that you're planning to improve. So this is one of the number one features that we hear from our customers today, misconfigurations is one of the top attack vectors. So we're, we want to ensure that our customers have that protection and have that ability to better secure their posture. And we will be, again, further investing into expanding SSPM to more applications. Wow. Yeah, and they can take actions right away here. So there's nothing they have to do manually. They select a section for most of them probably and say apply better settings and then they will be applied. That's a really good question. And let me clarify because you can't actually take um, the action directly from the portal. We'll tell, we'll share with you which uh, what the action plan is and what the steps you need to take specifically within that application. But we're not quite there yet. Um, it is something that we're looking to address on our roadmap, but we'll just surface the actual um, action uh, for the admin for now, just the visibility. Because the action is an action that needs to be done at the other application and not within the portal. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Got it. Okay. And I understand, yes. Okay, Caroline, so this was a lot. We talked a lot about discovery and, of course, clarifying first what it means, what it is, how, it's work, how, it, how it works, how we deploy it, and all these things. I know we have a lot more to cover. We wanted to cover information protection and threat protection, and maybe we can also go a little bit in app governance if we have time. Yeah. But this will be <laughs> part too, because we are, I think, a little over time. Uh, want yeah. to keep that short, but um, I think I can invite you again to talk to me about the rest of all the goodness that is part of Defender for Cloud Ops, right? That sounds amazing. I know I felt like we were a little ambitious this time, but we can def. I'm glad to come back for a part two, um, and we'll go through the rest it's of this a amazing big product. product. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's a big product, has a lot of things. So you can't just buy Google. Okay, so for now, thank you so much, Caroline, for being my expert on this show. And thanks for coming back for part number two. And everyone, thanks for watching. And don't miss part two, where we discuss all the things that we couldn't discuss today. If you have questions, feel free, put them in the chat and we will still watch them and bring them over to the next show. If you missed an episode, again, aka.ms slash ninja show, there's also share your voice um, on that page where you can give us feedback, you can suggest future episodes, topics that you would like to see. And with that, thanks for watching and see you all soon. Bye.